Now let's quickly talk through SSH. Stands for Secure Shell Protocol. Basically, it's a terminal emulator that allows you to connect to network devices in a secure fashion, and it uses TCP port 22. And like I said, it allows you to connect securely to network devices. Here is a six step process that you can use to configure or to set up SSH on your router or a switch to allow remote devices to be able to SSH into that device. So step one is we configure device name, which in this case is host R1. Step number two is we define our domain name, which in this case is najkazi.com. Step three is we define a local user account. So um, I created a username of Naj and password of Cisco for the purpose of this lab. In real world, of course, you'll set up an appropriate username and a very secure password. Fourth, we'll set up encryption keys for security session. The way we do that is define crypto key. We then enable SSH version two. There are two different versions of SSH, SSH version one and two. You definitely want to enable SSH version two, it's more secure. And finally, we change the default authentication protocol to SSH. And we could also optionally define Telnet as fallback under our VTY lines or virtual terminal lines. Now, one thing I'm gonna warn you is Telnet is not secure at all. So you should actually not be using it in real world but for lab purposes, I'm just showing you how you can set up Telnet as a fallback mechanism. So the first thing we do is we go to R1 and we type in line VTY zero through four, and then we define transport input SSH as the primary mechanism and Telnet as a secondary mechanism for connecting to R1. And that's it. Now let me quickly jump on CLI and show you how to properly configure this. And then we'll also initiate an SSH session from R2 into R1. So let's go ahead and configure R1. We're gonna to go to global configuration mode. We already have our host name set up. So I'm gonna go ahead and type in IP domain name to specify our domain server or DNS server. I'm gonna call it najkazi.com, but you can specify your real domain name server or DNS server in your environment, in real world. I'm gonna type in username Naj, and I'm gonna type in password of Cisco. I will then go ahead and set up a crypto key, generate RSA, generate keys, modulus, and we'll pick the highest possible modulus for higher level of security. We'll then do IP SSH version two, because that's the version you wanna set up. And finally, this is what ties it all together, is we go into the VTY lines and we define our transport input to SSH as primary and Telnet as a fallback. Since I'm using Packet Tracer, it appears I'm limited to what I can do. So you can scratch the idea of secondary. That's okay, we'll just set up SSH on this device. This is actually better to just have SSH anyway. It's more secure. So now what we'll go ahead and uh, write our configuration from R2 now. The next thing you wanna do is you wanna SSH into that device, right? So we're gonna define our username we want to say Naj, and now we need to define our host, which is 10.0.0.1. So I'm on R2, I'm trying to SSH into R1. It's asking for password. If you guys remember, password is Cisco. I went ahead and slightly tweaked the username because for some reason, Cisco Packet Tracer didn't like a three letter username. It won't let me SSH. So on the fly, I changed the username to Najkazi and it then lets me log in. So let's go ahead and give it a shot. So we'll go ahead and type in SSH. We then wanna 
specify dash L, you want to specify our username. And finally, we want to type in the IP address that you want to connect to. And then it asks for password, which in my case is Cisco, and I'm in. And that's it. Now I'm on R1. I'm SSH'd into that device from R2. That wraps up the SSH section. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.